Bearded dragons are one of the most popular pet lizards in the entire world, and they're all right, but you don't really want one. You want one of these instead. Okay, okay, you're gonna figure it out anyway. Like, I actually love bearded dragons and they're awesome pets, but everybody has one. Everybody has one. So, I understand why you'd want something that is a little bit different. Maybe you're a reptile hipster. You want something before it's cool, you know? There is nothing wrong with that at all. So today, let's go over five species that are very similar to bearded dragons. Similar diet or similar requirements, similar size, whatever. They're all drier, diurnal type species of similar sizes. So let's just get right into it. Number five, pretty obvious, Euromastix. Now there's a bunch of different ones. So you can get one that is the same or similar size to bearded dragons, or you can get one that's smaller, or you can get one that's more colorful, or you can get one that is way bigger. Egyptian Euromastics are gonna be a lot bigger than any bearded dragon, and they come from not a similar area of the world at all, but similar requirements. They like it really hot, even hotter than bearded dragons. They like it really dry, and their diet does include a lot of salad. It also includes seeds though which is weird because what else eats seeds? So you can feed things like lentils to them along with salads, but they don't eat bugs at all. So a lot of the reason with some people who leave comments who have talked to, they don't want bearded dragons because they eat insects and they don't want to feed a live prey item, even if it's just a bug, just a bug, right? I understand. I get it. So instead they want something that's a vegetarian, but they, or herbivore is the right word, but they don't want a, an iguana or something like that. Well, your mastics kind of take the cake. They've got these toad-like heads and these really spiny tails. They're absolutely amazing. I personally love your mastics. And in terms of handleability, it's kind of hit and miss because there are definitely some Euromastics that are very easy to handle and they're very handleable all the way around. And there's other ones that take a while to tame out and it's just a little bit more difficult to tame them out for handling than bearded dragons in my experience. But no matter how you slice it, your mastics are pretty awesome. Number four, Aki monitors. Aki monitor, this is kind of a stretch. Well, not really. They actually have an overlapping area of natural range in Australia. So they're from parts of the same part of the world for sure. Uh, so it's very similar type requirements in terms of heat and humidity, but you need a little bit more burrowing area for uh, Ackies. You can give burrowing area, like what I'm talking about is depth of substrate. I just ate so many wings and now I can't think. Anyway, depth of substrate is what I'm saying. I mean, burr, blah, blah. depth of shrubs, Nice execution. You're doing terrific. Depth of substrate is what I'm trying to say. So yes, bearded dragons will burrow if you give them the opportunity, but it is essential to have at least a foot or sometimes more, it depends on which care guide you read. Aki monitors are amazing. I love them. I got turned on to them a few years ago and finally found one of my own. This is Susan. So maybe not the easiest to keep. They do get a similar size, uh, but I think that the diet is a little bit easier because they're insectivores. They'll eat things like pinky sometimes, which bearded dragons will also, but it's very similar-ish, kind of. But they're different and monitors are cool. I mean, there's no denying monitors are cool and this is a smaller species. Uh, Asian water monitors are for not a lot of people, but a lot of people want them because they want a monitor. Well, maybe you should get something a little bit more reasonable like an Aki. They come in red and yellow and different colors. And anyway, I love them. I'm glad to have one. I think they're one of the coolest lizards in the entire world. Number three, collared lizards. Collared lizards are interesting because I used to see them all over the place and they're not that common anymore. They are beautiful. The coloration on them is insane. They can cohab well. They eat insects and sometimes lizards in the wild, but in your collection will be insects. They're pretty easy to keep. They don't need crazy humidity. They actually like it pretty dry in comparison. They like it pretty hot. And did I mention they're beautiful to look at? Now we'll take some points away because they're not the most handleable things in the world. So this is more of a display pet, although some people can tame them out. I'm just saying it's a lot harder than with a bearded dragon. They're also a little bit smaller than bearded dragons, but they do cohab well, which bearded dragons usually don't. So there is a 
big difference here. I think this is probably the most difference of the entire group. I think that this is something I would love to have just to watch. Like this would be an amazing display animal if you had a big enclosure, even if it was a bioactive one, which are a little bit more difficult with arid setups, but they're not that uncommon and they're really not that expensive. So overall, I think they're pretty amazing. I would recommend, of course, with any of these, if you wanna get one, do your research, but did I mention how beautiful they are? Number two, Chuck Wallace. We've been talking about them on this channel for a while. I talk about them semi-often, kind of often, regularly, semi-regularly. They're not a stranger to the channel is what I'm trying to say. I think they're cool. I've only really seen them in one reptile shop ever. It was cohabbed with a bearded dragon, which I don't recommend, but they have very similar requirements. If you can take care of a bearded dragon, you can take care of a chuckwalla. Now, they are different in terms of diet. Chuckwallas, which are from the Southwest US, by the way, they like it very hot, very dry, similar to bearded dragons, but they don't eat insects. They are completely herbivores. So you can feed them things like Swiss chard, watercress, uh, arugula, like the, anyway, this is not a care guide. They're easy to take care of and I prefer animals that eat herbivorous or at least partly herbivore diets because grow it in your garden or go to the supermarket and throw it in there and that's it. But better than the other Southwest of the US type animals and the collared lizards, they're better at handling by far. These things are super calm, cool, collected, most of the time, each is an individual, of course, because I know I always get the comment, you said they were easy to take care of, but my mom's brother's dog's pet Chuck Walla. Yeah, I know. Certain ones might be flighty, but not all of them. And they're beautiful to look at. Sure, they're not gonna move a ton in the enclosure. They're pretty lazy, but they do a lot of them anyway. There's different locales, but some of them with the very dark and red back and just their face, I think they look super unique. And in my opinion, they're one of my favorite animals to just look at. I think it'd be really cool to have an arid setup and have this in your office, your bedroom, your living room, whatever, or reptile room. It's not something I keep in my personal collection, but if I was looking for something and couldn't have a bearded dragon, that would probably be my first choice. Unless we're talking about number one, painted agamas. These are really cool and I'm almost embarrassed to say I didn't even know they existed until I watched Clint's Reptiles video about them a couple of years ago. Well, to be fair, I did know they existed. I always called them clown agamas, which is accurate. They are called that also, but I didn't realize how cool they were. I thought they were just another like collared lizard type thing where you can't really handle them. I didn't realize how very similar they are to bearded dragons. They're a little bit smaller, so you can keep them in a little bit smaller of an enclosure. They're mostly insectivores, so you feed them a lot of bugs. Uh, they like the same sort of temperatures and humidity are pretty similar anyway. They're diurnal like everything else on the list. They're really similar. I think Clint's Reptiles video is called the Better Bearded Dragon. From everyone I've talked, there's a breeder in Quebec that I was speaking to and it seems like, yeah, they're just kind of a better bearded dragon. Now they're from Africa, not Australia, but Africa and Australia, different parts have similar climates, right? So I think this is a direct comparison in terms of easy, uh, the availability, they're pretty available. They're almost always found captive bred or at least in North America and they're not expensive. I see them for 150 bucks all the time. So I could beat this dead horse, but I kind of think we're probably gonna do a dedicated video about painted agamas, so. Click subscribe if you haven't already for that, I'd really appreciate it. And if you liked the video, hit like, that'd be awesome. Helps the channel, projects it to more people, YouTube algorithm, blah, blah, blah. And as always, a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys get discounts on the merch. This is a uh, diamond. You didn't bite my ear for the last two videos. How about that? How about this guy? Anyway, you get to see extra stuff, discounts on merch, a uh, whole bunch of new content, all for as little as a dollar a month. And um, I think that's it. Because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.